Virtually every radio personality in the world is insecure. There are at least five key reasons for this. Number one, because their performance cannot be measured in a timely manner. Let me illustrate this with yet another sports example, this time from the rough-and-tumble, action-packed world of bowling. What if the sport of bowling worked like this? You make your approach and release the ball, which rolls smoothly down the alley. Then, just before the ball reaches the pins, an opaque, soundproof screen descends, making it impossible for you to see which pins the ball knocked over and preventing you even from hearing any impact from the ball hitting the pins, if indeed it did hit the pins. A few months later, you receive a report in the mail telling you exactly how many pins you knocked down. If this is the way the sport worked, do you think you would continue to bowl? Well, that's what it's like to be a radio personality. There is very little immediate feedback. Ironically, it is the availability of limited but instant feedback that often is the downfall of some radio talk show hosts. They have five phone lines in the studio. If all five lines light up with calls, they figure they're a hit. Of course, that only means that five people are calling. Maybe 5,000 other people are trying to call in, too. Or maybe those are the only five people in the audience who care enough about the topic to pick up the phone. Returning now to our list of reasons why every personality in the world is insecure, number two, because everyone witnesses their performance. If they make a mistake, everyone hears it. Listeners, sponsors, friends, enemies, co-workers, supervisors, everyone. Few people have jobs in which everyone can witness every mistake they make, but radio personalities do, and that adds to their insecurities. Number three, radio personalities are socially isolated from the rest of the workplace. They feel like outsiders. They don't spend much, if any, of their work time at a desk in an office or a cubicle. They don't work normal hours. Often they don't even dress like everyone else in the office dresses. They feel like outsiders because, to a significant degree, they are outsiders. Number four, every performer in the world wants to please. Even the biggest, most obnoxious jerk of a jock you can find wants to please his audience. Think about some first date you had long ago when you were so desperately hoping the other person would like you, would find you interesting, would want to spend time with you again. That's how every radio personality feels about his listeners, even if simultaneously he treats them with contempt. Number five, when they're successful, they're never sure how much of that success is due to them. How much was due to the music, to the station's promotions or advertising, to its dial position, signal strength, or heritage in the market? Just how insecure is the typical radio personality? Well, let's say you're a program director. Last night, your three-year-old child was up all night with the mumps, and you were up all night with her. Before leaving for work this morning, you had a big argument with your spouse. Then you went outside to discover that your car had been stolen. Because of a taxi strike, you ended up running all the way to the radio station, in the rain, of course, and arrived 45 minutes late for a meeting with the CEO of your company. Your head is pounding out the rhythms of a migraine headache, and you keep sneezing into your sleeve. As you rush down the hallway, wondering if you still have a job, frowning fiercely and muttering to yourself, one of your disc jockeys happens to be walking toward you from the other end of the corridor. He sees you walking in his direction and frowning. And do you know what he thinks to himself? He hates me. My program director hates me. He's probably on his way to start the paperwork to fire me. <laughs>